Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here. In this tutorial today, we're gonna to look at how to use Instamask in a full workflow. Now, for those of you who don't know about Instamask, I released this last week, and it's a new luminosity mask panel that helps us craft any mask we want. It's now included at no extra cost in the Raya Pro bundle for CC. And for existing Raya Pro users, I've already emailed you a link to download the panel for free. If you didn't get that email, please go in the description of this video on YouTube and you'll see a link to where you could actually download the panel. So on with the tutorial. Now I'm working with two exposures from Lake Matheson in New Zealand, and here's a darker exposure on top, which covers the sky. And here is the brighter exposure below it, which we're gonna use for most of the foreground. I've already prepared these images in Adobe Camera Raw using the same techniques that I used in the last video. So if you haven't seen that video, again, if you go down to the description in this video on YouTube, you'll see a link to that video on how to prepare your images for exposure blending. Now I just wanna take the sky from the darker exposure and put it into the brighter exposure. To use Instamask, I'm just gonna open it up. We have to create one of our masks first. And there are lots of different ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you it just by creating a 16-bit luminosity mask called Brights One, and then I'm gonna bring the sliders along. And we're just gonna refine that mask so that most of the sky is white and the foreground is dark, just like that. When we're finished, we then have to select the layer that we wanna apply the mask to. And I'm gonna press Apply. And now we've applied that mask. So you can see we have brought back the sky in the brighter exposure, and we haven't affected any of the trees or anything else. So we have a relatively balanced image. Now I'm actually gonna select the mask here. I'm gonna select the brush, have 100% opacity, and just paint along here so that we keep the nice mist and clouds in the brighter exposure, just so they're a little bit brighter. Now I'm gonna do a few things here that I probably wouldn't ordinarily do in my workflow, but I just wanna show you what Instamask can do in general. So I wanna add a little bit of color along these trees here and some contrast as well. To do that, we need to make a selection of the trees first. So I'm gonna open up Instamask again, and I'm gonna to go to the darks masks just to target the darker parts of the image. Well, that isn't a good selection because we're also including the sky. So I'm gonna try a darks three, and that's much better. You see, we have more of a selection of the foreground without the sky. Now I could still bring the slider along just to make it more targeted towards the trees in the foreground. And I think that's a good selection. So I'm gonna apply that to a dodge and burn layer. And here's the dodge and burn layer. Now we can do lots of things with this dodge and burn layer, but I'm actually gonna use it right now just to add some color to the trees. And so I'm gonna choose my foreground color and I'm gonna select kind of a warmish, bright orange color or yellow that is. And just press okay. Now I'm gonna change this layer. At the moment it's soft light. I'm gonna change it to overlay just to make it more contrasting. I'm gonna set the opacity of my brush to 30%. And now watch what happens if I paint over the trees. We create some beautiful color in those trees. I'm just gonna make my brush a bit smaller. And we'll do the trees along here too. And we're also brightening up the trees a little bit too. I'm just gonna undo that and I'm gonna set the opacity to 20% on these trees just to make them a little bit less bright. And then I can bring the opacity down just a little bit because we don't want the color to be too strong and unnatural. The next thing I can do on this dodge and burn layer is I can select the dodge tool. I can make sure we're targeting just the highlights. I've got my exposure to 10%. And if I paint on the trees, we're brightening them up. Just making them a little bit more obvious. Now we only wanna do the right hand side because there's a strong light source to the left here and it seems more logical that they would brighten these trees rather than the ones to the left. Now I'm just gonna brighten up the bottom here. It just seems a little bit dark. And you'll notice that when we're painting, look, I'm dodging the sky and dodging the mountains and it's not affecting these areas at all. And that's because we have the mask, which is restricting our changes to only the trees. Now we can also add some extra local contrast to these areas as well and I'm gonna show you a different way to create the masks. I'm gonna press select cull, which is select color. Then we're gonna choose a part of the tree. So let's say here and press okay. And now we've made a really good selection of the trees. I'm gonna press detail. Now we have a high pass sharpen dialog. 
we can bring up the pixels quite significantly. I'm going to bring up to about 120 and press OK. And with this layer, if we just toggle it on and off, we've now added a lot of local contrast to those trees. We're really making them stand out. I think that's a very strong effect, so I'm just going to bring that down considerably. And now just for fun, we're going to add a nice autumn effect to the foreground too. So I'm going to create another mask. Let's say a darks too, just to target the shadows. And I'm going to choose autumn, and we can choose our radius. I'm going to leave it at 37. And now we've had our autumn effect applied to our foreground. Just to make sure you can see that, I'm going to zoom in. And there's the before and after. Now I think that's a little bit strong as well. So I'm going to bring the opacity down to around 20%. And that looks a little bit better. And now we want to put a little bit more emphasis on the mist in the foreground. So I'm not going to use Instamask for that. I'm just going to open up a curves layer. I'm going to bring the curve down quite a bit. And I'm going to press Command and I or Control and I. Choose a paintbrush, a white foreground, make it nice and big and make sure the opacity is set to 100. And then I'm just going to paint in the vignette around this area and I'm going to make that a tiny bit darker and now you see we've darkened the tops of the trees here and it doesn't look very natural so we can remove that quite easily because we've already got a selection of the trees so all I need to do is choose the auto effect layer hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac and left click on the thumbnail and now we've selected the foreground I can select this mask press command and H or control and H to hide the marching ants and I can choose a black paintbrush and just paint out the trees and you see we're not affecting outside of the trees we just don't want it to have an unnatural black edge across the top there now I'm just going to paint out the rest of the mountains here because we don't want black edging along, along there either and now I'm going to create a new curves layer but this time bring up the curve and just make a little bit of contrast and press Command and I again to invert the mask. Then I'm going to choose a white foreground brush, make a slightly smaller brush here, and I'm just going to paint in that area. So we're just trying to brighten up the mist. So this is what those two changes look like. This is before and this is after. So we're just adding more emphasis to that beautiful mist in the foreground there. And just to finish off, I'm going to open up a levels layer bring the slider along just to give the image a little bit more light bring the shadows along too and that should do it so this is our final image this is the image we started with you can see we had some overexposed sky and the trees lacked any real color or contrast and this is our final image and so that's a very quick tutorial showing you how to use instamask to speed up your workflow and make the masking process a lot easier and more flexible so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.